We have here the all new Kindle Paperwhite, better known as the Kindle Paperwhite 3. Yes. This has the same screen technology as uh, the Amazon Kindle Voyage at a fraction of the price. This is $120, whereas the new Voyage is $199. Uh, the Voyage is 12% lighter, but this uh, has a lot of things going for, for it, including uh, a very high resolution e-ink screen, with a 300 ppi and 1430 by 1080 yeah, so it's, it's it really steps up the kindle's game in terms of uh, overall performance let's take a look at the hardware so the kindle hasn't changed much from the last generation and you can see the side by side in our comparison video the back amazon engraved logo is now no longer piano underneath all the letters it is just plastic matte of course, Amazon still does not have any manual page turn buttons, so you're forced to use everything on the screen. Uh, it is not a flush screen and bezel. It is about a millimeter deep, unlike the Kindle Voyage. You have a power button, light indicator, and a micro USB port for transferring data. The front Kindle logo has become piano finish instead of the back now, whereas the old Amazon Kindle Paperwhite 2 was white. So this is the home screen for the all new Kindle Paperwhite. As you can see here that if you've ever used a Kindle before, modern Kindle, yeah. you'll notice that there's the home, back, glow light, shopping, search, and Goodreads option. Goodreads is a social book discovery network. You can form virtual book clubs. You can switch things between list view and cover view. You can create collections if you have a lot of books. There's an experimental web browser, and a, a future video will show you exactly how to use this. I love it. Seven generations of Kindles. Right. Three paper whites later. Yeah. Experimental browser. So you have books that are on the cloud, which are books that you've purchased maybe on other e-readers, tablets, smartphones, and whatnot, but then aren't necessarily on the device. And you can toggle back and forth to choose what's actually on the storage. Yeah, so you can keep your e-reader nice and clean. Let's take a look at the reading experience. We have Sycamore Row by John Grisham. So page turns are to be expected, as expected, are very clean, refreshes every six to 10 pages kind of thing. Uh, we have different options here. We have text. This is probably the most go-to you're going to be going to because it is everything here. This is the size, margins, line spacing, and fonts. Back in uh, the Paperwhite 2, Cecilia was the default font. Now we're sitting on Bookerly as the default font. Here's the differences between the two of these fonts. Amazon's made a lot of advancements aside from the fonts in terms of cleaning it up. So you'll notice that there's a lot of new options here in terms of changing the size of the font and everything is nice and, and readable. The high definition screen really stands yes. out. So if you are someone that spends a lot of time on your Kindle and has had many Kindles or other e-readers in the past, you're going to get a tremendous reading experience from here. Of course, you can do all the little things that you can do on previous Kindles, such as uh, highlight, take notes, make annotations, uh, look words up in the dictionary. If you want to find out more about the book that you're reading, you can engage in X-Ray. X-Ray is a really cool feature people places and things you can look up main characters how often that they're referenced through the book some books get kind of complicated with introducing a ton of different characters all, seemingly all at once uh, the latest william gibson book the peripherals really guilty of that where they introduced almost 30 characters within the first the five chapters so this is a good way that you can find out a little bit about the character the biography they're a major or yeah. minor character if you're juggling many books it's essential of course you can go to specific things but you can really get a sense of where you are in the book by this one minute left in the chapter and you've read 74 percent of the current chapter yes. so that's really handy
We know it's an e-reader, so you're meant to read books, but this handles PDFs rather well. So this is the Dungeons Monsters, Dungeons and Dragons Monsters Manual. We choose this because it has an even mix of shades, uh, text, and pictures. So we're just going to do some pinch and zooms. You have to be very patient with it because pinch and zooming can take a while. You'll notice you have a mini map with a locator showing you where you are on the page. Once you let go, it is a very large PDF, so it takes about three or four seconds to fully render. You can see the grays are very nice, very crisp. The resolution on his claw is very nice, and you actually get long presses, which no other e-reader does without the use of a stylus. What you can do from here is all of the normal functions you can do in an e-reader uh, on an e book, highlight, add note, even translation on any PDF. So that's tremendously valuable on the Amazon Kindle Paperwhite. Yeah, translations are important because you can convert one word or one phrase uh, to another language entirely, which yes. is very useful. So uh, the PDF experience on the Kindle is satisfactory, but it's not great. If you're looking for a dedicated PDF reader, we recommend Sony Digital Paper or to so. invest in a tablet. E-readers are just not indicative of a great PDF experience when it comes to extensive PDFs. It's only for basic PDFs. Yeah. Newspapers, uh, magazines will not work. A rule of thumb is if it's very image heavy, then it's not. you're yeah. not going to get a great PDF experience, yeah, but if it's just so. written words, it's perfectly satisfactory. Uh, Amazon has made a lot of advancements with the Kindle Paperwhite 3, the all new Kindle, etc. etc. They have it basically just improved the screen technology yes. itself. Most things are, are, are exactly the same. I think that this is a really good buy if you are a person that is invested in the Amazon ecosystem, whether you've had a previous Kindle or if you use the Kindle reading app on your smartphone, on your tablet, or on your computer. I think that Amazon is very does very well for itself. 75% of the US ebook market it controls, 95% of the ebook market in the UK. So people really love their Kindles, and this is a winner. For goodyreader.com, my name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.